I'm Gene Simmons. The problem with relationships is both men and women have dominion over each other. There's a judge and jury. Someone can ask you, where are you going? Where you been? My first response to the question, where have you been, is, who wants to know? People only want to know where you've been to find out if you've been with someone else. If man or woman is late by an hour or so, but especially the man, she wants to know where he's been. If she calls the office and he's not there, she'll ask, where have you been? Who wants to know? What gives people the right to ask such questions? It eventually comes down to, does somebody have dominion over you? And does someone have their hand in your pocket? Whether they love you or not is beside the point. No one has the right to ask me where I'm going. Nobody has that power. I'm a grown-up. The last person I had to answer to, my mother, had that right because she gave me life. There's no one else who should be allowed to ask you that question, not men to women or women to men. The only exception is if I hire you and you're doing work for me, I have the right to ask you where you've been, but only during the time frame I pay your salary. There are those men who are very jealous and possessive of their girlfriends, asking them where they've been and where they're going, keeping very close tabs on them. But these are men who don't have a lot of access to women. Guys who have a lot of girls don't really care. They're too busy dipping to notice what one individual girl is doing. It's when a guy has all his eggs in one basket that he holds on too tightly. Because there are no other females. If a guy's got a hundred girls he can call at any time, he doesn't hold on as tightly. Guys like Dr. Phil are always telling you, find out what the relationship is all about. But he avoids the truth, which is that biology dictates behavior. Oh, everyone else's husband is like that, not my husband. That's a lie. All men are created with the same basic DNA and have the same biological urges. And the divorce rate is high not because all these women are terrible, but because men wander. And I'm talking about the ones who have gone through divorces, who've paid the price for being caught cheating. And how about all the multitudes of men who never get caught? Count all those up. Why do men keep doing it? Because we're designed that way. And if you have an argument, argue with God. Yes! God damn it, Black Dragon. When are you going to do another podcast, Black Dragon? Jesus, Black Dragon, it's been over a year, Black Dragon. God damn it. How come you only have three podcasts, Black Dragon? Tell you what. You go out, you run three small businesses, you go date two, three, four women at a time, you have two kids, and go travel a lot on top of all that, then come back and tell me how much free time you have to do podcasts you can't charge any money for. <laughs> I do podcasts all the time, but you have to pay for them. I do like eight, nine podcasts a year, but you have to pay for those. SovereignManInnerCircle.com slash join. Well, I don't want to pay for them. I want everything to be free because I'm a socialist. Well, that's fine, pal. Let me explain to you how this works then. If you want something for free, you sit on your ass and you wait for me to decide when I want to give you something for free. See how this works? <laughs> if you give me money, then I do what you want. It's called capitalism, and I know you hate that, but that's just the way this works. All right, enough of that. It's been a long time. It's time to get to work. Today we're going to talk about relationships. Relationships is a very different concept than what I have talked about in my other podcasts. My other podcasts, I mostly focused on dating skills. I did talk about a few mindsets that would apply to relationships, but really it's been about dating. Today we're going to talk about relationships, which is the end game of why we date. Well, not me. I'm an alpha male. I don't date for relationships. I just want to get laid. Yeah, I understand that. And uh, I went through that phase too. And, and that's fine. If you want to go out and get laid and have sex with 100 women, and that's your goal, and that's fine. I have no problem with that goal at all. 
The challenge is I know for 99% certainty that at some point in your life, and it might take a few months, it might take a few years, it might even take a decade or two, at some point in your life, you're going to want to get serious with some special person. And if all you know are dating or seduction or pickup techniques, your relationships are not going to work. How do I know this? Because the vast majority of alpha male player PUA type guys I know who try relationships end up failing just as badly as the beta males whom they make fun of. Now, talking about relationships brings up a very unique challenge in that talking about dating techniques is actually very simple. I'm not saying the dating techniques themselves are simple. I'm saying that conveying the concepts and getting good at it is actually a very simple process, not necessarily easy, but simple. Seduction and dating really is simply a checklist. Do these things, don't do these things, and you will get laid. It's really that simple. Relationships is a little more complicated. We have different types of relationships. We have different types of men who want different types of things, etc., etc. The other big problem with discussing relationships and relationship techniques is the issue of societal programming. When I talk to you about how to go on a first date or how to say hi to a girl or how to escalate to sex or whatever, there's very little societal programming that my advice needs to bust through in order to get into your brain. It's very, very simple. I mean, there might be a little bit, there might be some resistance if I talk about a first date or a second date, maybe a little resistance in your mind about what is appropriate and what isn't, but not very much. It is actually women who have all kinds of societal programming that screw them up during the dating process. We men, fortunately, at least most of the time, don't have that problem, thank God. However, when it comes to relationships, you have all kinds of societal programming in your head, false societal programming about what is supposed to work and what is supposed to be right and how people are supposed to be. Of course, it's all things that don't work and it's not how people are, <laughs> but that's not how you think. You think that what you've been told is right and sadly what you've been told is wrong. That's what societal programming is all about. So when I talk about relationships and relationship techniques and designing and maintaining a quality relationship, not only do I have to tell you how to do it, and what to do and what not to do, but unlike dating skills, I also have to bust through all kinds of bullshit that you have in your head that's been ingrained in your brain since you were a very small child. So what sucks here is that if I want to help you get better at your relationship life, which I do, I have to literally deprogram you of all the horse shit you've got in your head so that the correct information can get through. Sometimes I will get guys who ask me why I harp so much about how monogamy, for example, doesn't work. That's why. I can't teach you what works until you unlearn what you've learned that doesn't work. It doesn't matter how well you do algebra if you think 2 plus 2 equals 5. I have to first tell you that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and pull that 2 plus 2 equals 5 shit out of you. Then when you get to the point where you admit, okay, fine, I guess you're right, 2 plus 2 does equal 4, then I can start teaching you the techniques and then you can start to improve. But not until then. You need to do both. That's what makes this relationship stuff so complicated as compared to just pickup skills or dating skills. So when I sat down and thought about what this podcast would be about, I knew it would be about relationships, but I couldn't really get a handle on what specifically to talk about because there are so many different things I could talk about around this topic, I decided to do this. And this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to lay out for you how most people do their relationships, how most normal men and women create and go through a typical romantic or sexual relationship. I'm going to lay that out for you. And then when we're done, I'm going to go through how I do it. And we're going to contrast not only the technique and the system, but the results. Because if you have a better system, you get better results. That's kind of the theme for the day, as you'll see as we go along. If you want better results, you have to change what you're doing. In other words, if your company sucks and your systems in your company suck and you fire an employee and bring in a new employee, your company will still suck because you're using a system that doesn't work. It has little to do with the employee that you fired and the new employee you hired. You think it's all about that employee when in fact it's the system that you're operating under. All right, so let's talk about how the normal man and the normal woman create a relationship. And we'll call this system, what should we call this system? Let's call this system normal monogamy. This is what most people do. And in all likelihood, this is what you do. If you don't do this exactly, then you do something very similar to this. This is how most people do it. First thing they do is they sit down and they say, I want a partner. 
and this partner must have these qualities. And then they write up, they don't literally write this up, they, they do this all in their brain. They write up the checklist. And they have this big fucking checklist. And if you've ever dated a woman, you know exactly what I'm talking about because women have amazingly long, amazingly ridiculous checklists. Men have them too. Believe me, I'll get to men in a second. So women have this checklist. We'll take women first. Women have this checklist. And you know what I'm talking about. He has to be, he has to have dark hair and he has to have blue eyes and he has to have six pack abs and he has to make at least 80,000 a year and he has to have a college degree and he has to wear black socks and his mom has to not be a bitch and tana, 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 tana. and it's a list that's 16 miles long of all the things that this perfect partner will have. And every time she goes out on a first date or meets a new guy, she pulls out her little checklist she pulls out a little pencil and she says, all right, okay, yes. Now, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me check the color of your socks. Oh, yes, good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how many children do you have? Do you have children? Are you divorced? And she goes down her goddamn checklist. Many of you have been on first dates. I certainly have been on a few of these where you can tell the woman is just really kind of just going through her goddamn checklist. She really doesn't care about you at all. She's just going down her list of shit for her perfect husband that doesn't exist. <laughs> Now, I don't want to pick on women because guess what? Men do this shit too. They don't do it quite as badly. They're not quite as overt about it. But trust me, man, men do this too. Men have their own stupid checklist. She has to be really hot and uh, she can only have had sex with like three other guys max because I don't want to marry a slut and she has to be really smart and she has to have a college degree and her parents need to still be married because I read on a blog that if her parents are married, the odds of divorce go down by 12%. And, and they do the same goddamn thing. They walk around slapping this checklist up against the forehead of every woman they run into. Now, men are different than women. Men will still have sex with women who don't match the checklist, of course. But the point is they have one. And when they meet a new woman, that's, that's what they've got in their head, this checklist. It's always in the back of their mind. All right, so you've got these two people, a man and woman, with these checklists in their brains, and they go out, they start dating, maybe they have a little sex, and eventually, or maybe not eventually, maybe pretty quickly, they come across someone, they go on three or four or five, maybe six dates, they have sex about twice, and after about this, the man comes to the woman and initiates monogamy, contrary to popular belief. Monogamy is usually initiated in a relationship by the man, not the woman. Many, many years ago, it was the other way around. Women would try to rope men in into these big committed relationships, and men would be very reluctant and say, ah, uh, no, uh. today, as men have become more pussified and more feminine and more beta male, and as women become stronger and more sexualized, it has swapped. And in most relationships, most of the time, and I'm talking at least more, over 50% of the time, it is the man who goes to the woman first, and suggests or demands monogamy. It is not women doing this, it is by and large men. And here's how it happens. What happens is on the fifth, sixth, seventh date, somewhere in there, like I said, they've, they've you know had sex maybe twice, they've known each other about three weeks, they're at a coffee shop or they're having dinner or something, and the guy says, um, so, uh, and he's looking at his arm, right, when he says this, so, I really like you, and I think you're really special, and I was thinking that maybe we should stop seeing other people because I really like you. What do you, what, do you, what do you think about that? Now, that's what he says. Here's what he's actually thinking. He is not thinking, oh, I love this woman so much. I want to commit my life to her. Now, he is thinking, wow, this woman is great. I'm sure he's thinking that. That's what Oneidas is all about. But he's not thinking, I want to get into a relationship with this woman because she's wonderful. What he's thinking is, hey, I've had sex with this woman now, and I like her. And because my ego is so fragile, and because I'm such a pussy, if any other man touches this woman, I'm going to lose my shit. And I don't want to lose my shit, so I have to build this big giant wall around this woman to make sure that no other man touches this woman, because if, God damn it, if this woman, if any other man even touches this woman, I'm going to fucking kill somebody, so i got to prevent that from happening. That's why he says, let's not see other people anymore. Let's be exclusive. Let's be monogamous. He doesn't say that to her, but that's what he's thinking. Now, what does the woman think? When he says, oh, I think we should stop seeing other people and be exclusive. Her immediate reaction, and either this is a verbalized reaction or this is something she's thinking, is 
something like, uh, I just met you like three weeks ago, so why would I suddenly leap into a relationship this fast? I mean, this is a little fa Then something very interesting happens. Inside every woman's brain is a little fairy. It's called the girl fairy. It's a completely irrational, psychotic little fairy. Every woman has it. And as she's saying to this guy, or at least thinking, why would I leap into a relationship this quickly with a guy I barely fucking know? The little feminine girl fairy says, guess what? If you make him your boyfriend, you could go on Facebook and put in a relationship. And then all of your Facebook girlfriends will say, oh my God, who is it? And then you can tell your mom you have a boyfriend and you can tell your Aunt Matilda that you have a boyfriend. And then when you go to work tomorrow, you can tell all the women at work that you have a boyfriend and all the women will be so excited and they'll ask you so many questions and everyone will kiss your ass and everyone will pay attention to you. Oh my God. So in the midst of all that, the girl who is about to say, well, why would I have a relationship with you? This She stops and goes, Okay. And there's one more thing here. The, you know, as bad as it gets, it gets worse. All the stuff about how the guy just wants to build a wall around her to make sure no other guy touches her. She has no idea that that's why he's asking her. All she thinks is, oh, he really likes me. Oh my God, he loves me for me. Now that's all horse shit. He doesn't like her at all beyond one-itis, beyond getting horny for her, beyond someone he's had sex with twice. He just doesn't want anyone else touching her. But that's not what she thinks, and that's not what she knows, and that's not what she interprets. All she thinks is that he really likes me. So she says, okay. And then he says, hell yeah. And then she goes, <laughs> And now, these two people, who not two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, didn't even know each other, are now in a committed, exclusive relationship. They've known each other for two or three weeks. Tops. Maybe a little longer. Moreover, they have entered into this relationship not because of each other, not because of compatibility, not even because of a mutual attraction, although that's a factor. They've entered into the wrong relationship for all the wrong reasons. He's in it because he doesn't want other men touching her. She's in it because she wants attention and accolades from her social circle. They're both in it because they're excited about someone who might, emphasis the word might, might match their checklists. They're excited about the checklist, not about the person. They're not even dealing with a real person because if you know someone for three weeks, do you really know the person? No, you're dealing with a fantasy or a guess of that person. When people get into relationships, they are not excited about the person. They are excited about the checklist. So not only are they entering into the relationship far too soon, they're doing it for all the wrong reasons. And we wonder why this doesn't work. People wonder why relationships don't work. Women are always saying, oh my God, why did he cheat on me? Well, gee, I wonder why. Guys are always saying, why did she fucking dump me all of a sudden out of the blue for no reason? I wonder why. We wonder why this shit doesn't work. <laughs> when we go out of our way, we as in the royal we, I don't do this. This is something normal people do. Normal people go out of their way to structure and build relationships that don't work. They start them off completely wrong. So what happens? After they enter into the exclusive committed relationship, for the next several weeks or the next several months, usually three to four months, these two people are the happiest they have ever been in their entire lives. It's called NRE, New Relationship Energy. It is that feeling of joy that you feel. Oh, by the way, let me back up. <clears throat> if at any time I use any terms or acronyms in this podcast that you don't understand, please go to blackdragonblog.com and click the glossary tab at the top of the page. All right, so NRE. NRE is the greatest, most powerful, most positive form of emotion that a human being can possibly feel. It is more exciting and more fun even than being in love. Yes, it is stronger and more positive than love. That feeling of euphoria that you have when you're dating someone new and exciting and wonderful and perfect, that's not love. That's NRE. And it actually feels better than love. My parents are in love. My parents have been married for damn near 43 years. But do you think they're like walking on air and pumped in the morning to see each other when they're away? From no, that's love. Love is different than NRE. But during the NRE phase, what people call the honeymoon phase, which is usually around three months, sometimes six months, in some unusual circumstances, it can be as long as a year or a year and a half. During that phase, 
They are the happiest they can possibly be. Everything is wonderful. They tell all their friends how wonderful and perfect this perfect new person is. Oh, I can't wait to spend my life with this person. Maybe, maybe not. But that's what they feel for a while. The problem with NRE, the problem with the honeymoon phase, is that it is, by its very nature, temporary. It doesn't last forever. It ends. And what happens when that period ends? Well, what happens is all the usual problems that normal people have in all the relationships. And you already know all of them because you've probably gone through them. Things like lying, drama, arguments, compromises on things you don't want to compromise on, cheating, as in getting caught cheating, breakups, bad breakups, divorces. And if for some amazing reason you beat the odds and you never break up and never get divorced, you get an additional set of new problems. Things like boredom, resentment, lack of sex, and on and on and on and on. Relationship problems that are so common People just consider them a normal part of a relationship. What they don't realize is that all of these problems are a direct result of how the relationship was created and how the relationship is maintained. They do it all wrong, so therefore, of course, they run into all kinds of problems once the honeymoon period is over. So what normally happens after that? They normally break up. Then what do people do? Well, they screw around a little bit and then they do it all over again with another person. They do the exact same thing, only with a different person. And they think, incorrectly, that this time it'll work because the person is different. It never occurs to people, very intelligent people, high IQ people, people with college degrees, people in their 30s and 40s. It never occurs to these people that they're going to have the exact same problem because they're initiating and utilizing the exact same system. They think it's all about the other person when in fact it really isn't. In most cases, it's not. It's about the system that they're using, the type of relationship that they're designing and trying to maintain. All right, let's switch gears now and let's talk about what I do. What I do is a little different. Actually, actually, that's not true. What I do is radically different. <laughs> it is so different that it eliminates 90, 95% of all the problems I just went through. Now, the challenge is what I do is very different. And what I do is directly against societal programming. And if you have never heard it before, it's going to sound very, very strange to you. Now, if you've read my stuff, obviously you've heard a lot of this, or at least some of this before, and it's not going to be as big of a shock. But here's how I do it. Here's how I manage my relationships. Here's how I create a relationship and maintain a relationship. First thing, right off the bat, I have no checklist. None. I do not screen for some magical, perfect woman that has absolutely everything that I want and will be the perfect partner for the next 47 years of my life. I do not do that. Now, that doesn't mean I date just anybody. Obviously, I have some baseline standards, but I really only have two. The first one is she has to be hot. She has to be physically attractive to me. And in my world, that means on a scale from 1 to 10, she needs to be, to me, at least an 8 or higher. Now, that's very subjective. My 8 may be your 10 or your 3. It's irrelevant. She needs to be attractive to me. That's number one. Number two, she can't give me any drama. She can't be a bitch. That's it. She has to be hot. And she can't give me drama. That's it. If she meets those two very simple requirements, she's in. She is qualified to be in my life and spend time with me. That's all I care about. Just those two things. There is no checklist of items. The next thing I do that is very different is that once I start dating a new person and start having sex with this new person, I do not stop dating and having sex with other people. I continue to date and have sex, to be very clear, with other women. Now, that doesn't mean I'm dating 12 different people at a time. My number is usually between two and four women. Rarely is it as much as four. I have time constraints on my time these days, and so it's not like I could fit in a lot of women. Many years ago, when I was a little more wild about this stuff, and I was still kind of in my recently divorced guy phase, <laughs> there were definitely months where there were more than four women. But these days, you know, I'm busy, run businesses, I'm over 40 now, I'm getting kind of old. I've knocked it down to two or three or four women. So at any given point in time, I am dating 
at least two, usually three, sometimes four women. I do not stop dating someone just because I happen to like them more than someone else. Why would I do that? That makes no sense. Well, that just means you don't want anything serious, and I want something serious. No, just wait a minute, and you'll see how this works. I want something serious, too. I have dated women in very, very serious in-love relationships under this model. I will explain how this works in a minute. Just relax. So over time, as I'm dating people, I do not ever, 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 ever bring up the concept of monogamy or exclusivity or any of that stuff. I never bring that topic up, ever. I also avoid the topic if it is brought up too soon, and too soon to me is sooner than three to five to six months or so. I've written more about that at the blog, blackdragonblog.com, so you can read more about it there, but I just don't, I don't even talk about it. I don't have that talk. I don't care. It's not relevant to me. I don't want to be part of that system with all the drama and fighting and bullshit and cheating. So I never have the talk. At least, not that talk. Now, when I'm dating these multiple women, does that mean that all the women I like equally, does that mean that they're all of equal quality in my life? I have equal feelings for all of them? No, that's not how human beings work. I promise you that if you are dating or having sex with multiple people, you will like one of them more than the rest. You'll kind of have a mini hierarchy of people. So what I do is that I categorize the relationship based on the woman's actions when she's with me. And if you've read my blog, if you've read my books, etc., you already know kind of how I do this, but I will review it here briefly. There are three basic categories to non-monogamous relationships. I'm going to cover them very quickly because I've covered them in detail elsewhere on the Black Dragon blog. First category is FB, or friend with benefits, or fuck buddy. This is someone you're having sex with, and that's it. You're not dating her. You're not cuddling with her. She's not spending the night. You're not hanging out with her other than maybe watching TV after sex very briefly, and then she leaves. You're having sex, and that's it. She's your friend. You're treating her like a friend, but you're not treating her like someone you're dating. That's an FB. The next level up is MLTR, and that's someone you're dating. You're going out on dates. You're romantic. You're cuddling a little bit. She can spend the night. This is someone you actually like and have some level of feelings for. And you can have multiple FBs. You can have multiple MLTRs. Some women might be FBs. Some women might be MLTRs. Also, MLTR is a range. There are some MLTRs you'll really, really like, maybe even be in love with. There are other MLTRs that might be just maybe one or two notches above an FB. So MLTR, when I say that, is a range. It's not a specific item like an FB is. The third category, which is kind of beyond the topic of this podcast, but I will mention it, and it answers the question of what about something serious, is OLTR. And that's a woman who is the equivalent of a very serious girlfriend or wife. You love just her. You are committed to just her. She's your one and only. However, you are allowed within whatever ground rules you both set to go get a little on the side as long as the women on the side are just one-night stands or very distant FBs. This difference between the MLTR and the OLTR is a source of a lot of confusion for a lot of guys who read my stuff. So I, I wasn't really planning on talking about this, but I will divert momentarily and describe the difference so that this is understood. When the term poly relationship is used. That means poly, polyamorous. That means MLTRs. That means you are literally dating multiple people. And possibly those women are dating multiple people. That's what poly means. OLTR is not poly. OLTR is an open relationship. Matter of fact, that's what it stands for. Open, long-term relationship. In an OLTR, you are dating one person. That's it. You are in a relationship, a true relationship, with one person. That's all. You're just having meaningless condom sex on the side occasionally. That's it. It is not a poly relationship. A lot of guys are very confused about this. A lot of guys say, well, most people aren't polyamorous. Well, how could you possibly raise kids and be polyamorous? You can't. You're right. <laughs> you can't raise kids under an MLTR system. That would be insane. When I talk about raising kids or getting married, I talk about OLTR. Matter of fact, that's one of my terms, OLTR marriage. So just be clear that poly and open relationships are two different things. They are both non-monogamous. They both fall under that umbrella, but they are not the same thing. MLTR and OLTR are very different. As a matter of fact, OLTR is a position that needs to be qualified for. So in other words, you don't just start dating a woman and say, okay, I like you, you're my OLTR now. No, 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 no. She needs to be your MLTR for a very, very long time. Six months at least, a year is better, and then you upgrade her to OLTR. 
But I digress. We're getting a little off topic here. Let me get back to what I was originally going to talk about, which is how I differ from normal people. So what I'm doing at this point is I am dating two, three, four different women. They are either FBs, MLTRs, or possibly a candidate for OLTR. In other words, a very high-end MLTR that I have high hopes for. Over time, one of several things will happen to the various women. One possibility is that a woman will just kind of float away. She'll just kind of float away and go get a boyfriend, which is fine. I let her go. There's no problem. There's no drama. There's no hurt feelings. There's none of that. And 92% of the time, and I know that for a fact because I track this on spreadsheets, 92% of the time, she will come back and she will resume dating me again. That might be six months later. It might be three weeks later. It might be two or three or four years later. Doesn't matter to me. I'm always dating multiple people, so I could care less when she comes back. Just like Gene Simmons was talking about. Other times she may remain in my life, but maybe there's a little problem. Maybe she starts getting a little dramatic. No problem. I will do what's called a soft next. And if you need to know what that is, go to the blog. Go read all about it. It is the temporary removal of her from my life for several days, where I kick her out of my life nicely and don't talk to her for a while. And then she comes back and she resumes the relationship as normal. There is no fighting. There is no screaming. There's none of that stuff. It's a soft next. Other times, I might start to really like this person and I will upgrade the person. Maybe the person was a low-end MLTR and I really start to like her and I will upgrade her to high-end MLTR. Maybe she was an FB. This doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. Maybe she's just a fuck buddy and that's it. And over time, she really starts to impress me. Maybe she goes for many, many months with zero drama and she's really fun the entire time and she has a really put together life. And I'm like, wow, she's not an FB. This is an MLTR. I'm really starting to like this person. This is great. And so I will upgrade her. And sometimes the opposite will occur. Sometimes after we have sex two or three times, I will decide that a woman is an MLTR and she'll be very impressive. But over time, she will start being a little stupid or a little dramatic or a little irresponsible or problematic in some way, and not bad enough where she's giving me drama, but just problematic. And so I will downgrade her and make her into an FB instead of an MLTR. So I just kind of knock it down to just sex and really not much else. So you can downgrade or upgrade. You can do both. And sometimes I do both. Depends on the woman, depends on the circumstances. Throughout this entire process, at no point am I telling these women that they are the only one. I do not lie to women. I do not pretend that they are the only one. I'll say it again. I do not bring up exclusivity. I don't even pretend that we are exclusive. They know that I'm out playing around with other women. Now, I don't give them details. If a woman says, did you have sex with someone else last week? I don't say, oh yeah, I had sex with this 26-year-old. Her pussy was great. No, I don't give her details. That's stupid. That would cause drama. And I don't do drama, which is my rule number one. Don't give me drama. That's all I ask. So I don't give details, but they know. I don't lie to these women because if I did, guess what? It would create drama, rules, all that other fun crap. I don't do that stuff. That, in a nutshell, is what I do. And that is how it's different from what normal people do. And like I said earlier, from perhaps what you do. So let me contrast the results that I get in the woman's side of my life from the typical guy who does it the typical way. So I'm going to go back down the list of usual problems that people usually have in normal relationships and describe why I never have these problems. Number one, lying. Like I said before, I don't lie to women. There is no woman I have ever dated who will come back and say, Black Dragon lied to me, because I don't lie. I am very honest about who I am and who I am not. Again, I'll say it again. That doesn't mean I go to a woman and tell her exactly what I'm doing, with whom I'm doing, and when I'm doing it, and how the boobs tasted, and all that fun stuff. No, that's stupid. That would create drama. But I don't lie. If a woman says, are you still having sex with other women? I don't say no. I might say I'm not discussing that. I might say yes, I'm not giving you any details, but I don't say no. There is no lying. I don't lie to women. I don't need to. Why? Lying is something that beta males need to do. Lying is something that needy guys need to do. Lying is something men do to women to not lose those women. I don't have that problem. I don't need to lie. Now, can women lie to me? Well, oh, possibly, but if they're FBs, do I care? No, I, I have some FBs I've been with who are serial liars. <laughs> do I care? No, again, what are my two requirements? Be hot, don't give me drama. So I don't care if they lie. Lie all you want, sweetie. That just means you're going to be an FB. 
Now, if you're an MLTR and you start lying to me, guess what happens? You're going to be downgraded to an FB, and now I don't care. You see how this works? Very simple. Drama. Most people have drama in their relationships. Matter of fact, most girlfriend-boyfriend relationships, most husband-wife relationships have regular routine drama as part of the relationship. I'm not going to tell you that I never have drama. I think that's impossible. You're going to have some drama if you're dealing with a female. But it is literally less than 5% of the drama the typical person receives. Maybe twice a year do I have a woman who actually gives me drama, who raises her voice in anger at me or starts bitching and complaining and whining to me. That happens, but we're talking maybe, my God, I'm not kidding, man. Twice a year at the most? Most guys I know with girlfriends deal with that shit every week, sometimes every day. So drama, no, not a problem I have. I don't do drama. That's one of the primary reasons I date women like this. I don't do drama. I don't have time for it. It's childish and stupid. I have better things to worry about in my life. Arguments. That's the same thing with drama. Do I have a lot of arguments in my relationships? No. I tell women, this is who I am. This is how I am. This is what I will be, and I will never change. If you don't like it, you are more than welcome to stop seeing me and go see another guy. Who, by the way, will lie to you and cheat on you. But I don't say that part. I just think it. So there's very little arguments <laughs> in my world because women have nothing to argue about. If a woman is arguing with you, that usually means you made her a promise and you fucked up on that promise. Or at least you implied a promise and didn't follow through on the implication. I don't do that. I'm very clear with women about who I am, what I'm doing, and who I'm not, and who I never will be. So like drama, arguments are, I'm not saying they never happen, but they're extremely rare. Again, most normal people I know in normal relationships have arguments all the fucking time. Oh my God. I mean, I don't know how you guys do that. Ugh. Next one, compromises. I don't compromise anything. Let me say that one more time. I don't compromise anything. My life is the way it is and I do not compromise it for any woman. Now, there's one exception to that I will get to in a moment, but I'm going to reiterate this. When I have an FB or an MLTR, in no way do I change my life around. In no way do I compromise my principles. In no way do I change my schedule. In no way do I change my goals or my lifestyle for a woman. Not at all. Again, I'll say it again. I am who I am. I'm never going to change. If you don't like it, break up with me and go date somebody else. That's my attitude, and that's what I convey to women. So I don't compromise a thing. Now, OLTR is a little different. At some point in my future, perhaps even my near future, I will have a woman in my life who is an OLTR, who is an actual open relationship instead of a polyamorous relationship. And under those conditions, especially if you live with a woman or legally marry a woman under an OLTR marriage, yes, you're going to have to compromise a little. But even then, Compared to the typical guy who moves in with a typical monogamous girlfriend or typical monogamous wife, you're comparing apples to dump trucks. It's literally 10% to 100% difference. You're going to compromise a little, but not much. But the point here is, under the current FB MLTR system that I'm talking about, there is no compromising I'm doing whatsoever. I never need to resent a woman because I felt I had to compromise in order to keep her. Okay, let's get to the next problem. Cheating. People cheating on everybody. Happens all the time. You hear about this constantly. Fucking Facebook is full of people being mad about who, why did this person cheat on me? Why did this bitch cheat on me? Why do guys always cheat on girls? Blah, 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 blah. I have never cheated on anyone in my entire life, and I never will. Why? Because I don't promise monogamy to begin with. You can only cheat on someone if you've promised, or at least strongly implied, that you will be monogamous to someone, and I never do that. So cheating literally is not even part of my world. Cheating is part of the monogamy world. You can only cheat if you're in a monogamous relationship. I never get monogamous, so I can't cheat. Moreover, women can't cheat on me. If a woman is an FB or an MLTR, she can go fuck other guys all she wants. Now, there are some parameters around that in order to protect my physical health. There are rules about condom usage and things like that, but that's just to protect my physical health. In terms of cheating or breaking any rules, I don't care if women fuck other guys. I am not threatened by other men. My ego is not threatened by other guys. I don't give a shit what a woman does when I'm not around as long as she's hot <laughs> and, say it with me, she doesn't give me drama. I don't care. Go fuck whoever you like. Better wear a condom. Better get a lot of STD tests. I better see the results of those tests, etc., etc. But other than that, really don't care. There is no cheating in my world. There never will be. Breakups and divorces. Let's not talk about divorce because that's a little more complicated. That's only if you legally marry somebody 
and there are ways to legally marry someone under an OLTR system, but that's a little beyond the topic and beyond the scope of this podcast. So let's talk about breakups. I don't have breakups. I have breaks. I have nexts, which are temporary. Matter of fact, there's a term I have, listen fitty, L-S-N-F-T-F-T, and the T in there stands for temporary. When a woman temporarily leaves me for a monogamous boyfriend and then realizes how that works (laughs) and and remembers all the downsides of that and then comes back to me. So I don't have breakups. I don't have big, tearful, angry breakups with lots of long emails and lots of long phone calls and angry Facebook messages. That literally does not happen. It has literally never happened. What happens is a woman simply floats away. There's either very little communication or very quick, nice communication. And then she's gone. And then 92% of the time, she comes back. I don't have breakups. Breakups, again, are part of the monogamous world. I want no part of something as stupid and ridiculous and dramatic and fifth grade level as a breakup. That's just silly to me. So I don't have breakups. Next problem, boredom. Boredom? (laughs) You think I'm bored? (laughs) (laughs) you think when i'm dating three four different women at a time some of which are much younger than me all of which are really hot to me you think i ever get bored ever (laughs) no i don't have boredom i don't have boredom in any part of my life my god i don't even know what that would feel like resentment as i said earlier i don't have to make major compromises for anyone i don't have to make any compromises for an epi or mltr so i don't feel any resentment i never had that emotion Because I don't get into circumstances where that emotion would manifest. By making all kinds of promises and compromises of things I really didn't want to do in order to keep a woman so she doesn't break up with me. So I don't have that problem. Lack of sex. Kind of like boredom. Uh, (laughs) You think I have that problem? Go date two, three, four women and come back and tell me that you're never getting late. (laughs) Sex is okay. I'm plenty good on that. Don't worry about that. So that's really it. That's it in a nutshell. That's the difference between what I do and what other people do and the difference between my results in my life and my level of happiness and what other people receive. It's a little different, as you can see. (laughs) Is my system perfect? No. There are plenty of problems with my system. There are plenty of things that you have to be very aware of. There are plenty of things that take a little extra work. There are plenty of mental things you have to rearrange in your brain a little bit. So is my system perfect? No. Is my system better than the typical system? Yes. By orders of magnitude, it is better. It is not perfect. There are problems with it. There are legitimate complaints you could make about my system. But it is better in just about every way. Matter of fact, in every way than the first system I described. The system of meeting someone, using a checklist, committing to exclusivity way too fucking fast, expecting eternal perfect monogamy having all kinds of problems and arguments and cheating and breakups and bullshit after the honeymoon period. This system that I have laid out for you today, this new system, is far superior than the old system in every way possible. Are you going to have a lot of objections when you hear this, especially if you've heard this the first time? Yes, you are. Holy crap. Like I said, societal programming is going to tell you that just about everything I just said about what I do is wrong or cannot work or cannot work under certain conditions. Societal programming is false. You are more than welcome to go to my blog, blackdragonblog.com. Matter of fact, I have an article there about all the objections that people use against the system that I'm talking about. And again, I'm going to say it again. My system is not perfect. There are problems with my system. I'm saying it's better. I'm saying on the overall it's superior in literally every way in which you can spend time with a woman in a romantic or sexual context. As usual, I could go on and on and on and talk about this, and I can only summarize and scratch the surface of this very complicated topic in one little podcast, but that should give you a good overview and a good contrast as to what it looks like when you embrace a poly or open system rather than a traditional, societally programmed monogamous system. That's all I've got for today, brother. Get back out there and get back to work. Stop messing around with your life. Get this shit handled. As David D. used to say, it's not just about getting laid, it's also about long-term relationships. Make sure you address both. Have fun. Bye.